I've never been a fan of emptying your wallet on the latest, greatest, most expensive piece of kit in the hopes it will bring you better pictures. I think it's far more important to learn how to use the basics, the very fundamental tools of photography, before moving on from there. However, in the case of these babies, there is an argument to be had. Now, in every film we've made to date, I have only ever used a consumer lens. I have never used a fast professional lens ever. And the reason for that was I wanted to make sure you guys saw that you don't necessarily need to spend those big bucks. Now, with the price for a consumer lens sitting at around £250, whereas a fast pro lens is at about one and a half thousand, I thought it'd be interesting to see what you get for your money should you choose to invest. The first and most noticeable difference is size that does size matter ancient age-old question that it is now both of these lenses are in the same kind of focal range we're talking 70 to 200 millimeters this is my old lens this is the lens that many 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 of these pictures which you will have seen in different films on our site I use this lens to take them this is a 70 to 210 millimeter lens this goes back to my days of 35mm and the reason I'm using it is that I bought a new Nikon 18 to 200 super zoom. I was experimenting with that because all the time I'm not changing lenses, I'm shooting pictures so I'm not going to waste any time. But the new 18 to 200mm lens was nothing like as good quality as this old lens, so I went back to my old one. Both of these lenses are full frame. That means that they cover the area of a piece of 35mm film. That is an old 35mm lens. This baby here is a full frame lens. It's, a, it's for an FX sensor. Don't get hung up about sensors. This is a 70 to 200 zoom, as I said before. But what are the differences? Now, I'm not going to go into all that how many elements it's got ground to whatever tolerances stuff, because I'm not really interested. What I want to know is, what difference is it going to make to the final product, the photograph at the end of the day? Well, we're going to find that out in a minute. Right now, here we go. This lens is quite light. It's, it's kind of not very big, it's fairly light, it, it does the job. It's got a push me pull you to, to zoom the focal length on it. Whereas this one is obviously considerably more heavy. This also has lots of knobs and buttons and things going on. This funny looking thing here is what you use to mount it onto a tripod. I just kind of undo that and turn it around and do it up again. And then you put your tripod mount onto here and mount it like that. Why would you do that and not put it in the bottom of the camera? It's weight. This lens weighs a lot. And it's much better to let the weight of the camera sit on the back of the lens than to have the weight of this lens bearing down on the mount. So that's why you have these little feet. This is what's called a fast lens. That means it has a wide aperture. This one is not a fast lens. The old one, that has a maximum aperture of f5.6, whereas this has a maximum aperture of f2.8. Remember, the smaller the number, the bigger the hole. Now that big aperture allows lots of light to come blasting up through the lens so you can use a faster shutter speed and that's why it's called a fast lens. It's got nothing to do with the lens itself, it's actually got everything to do with the shutter speed. So a fast shutter speed allows you to freeze motion obviously but it also means that you can start shooting pictures in lower light without getting camera shake. You don't want blurry fuzzy pictures because your shutter speed isn't fast enough to freeze the motion that you make as you take a picture. Now on the subject of sharpness, this lens also has VR, vibration reduction. Many modern lenses do. In fact, the, the, the uh, uh, consumer version of this lens, which would be the 55 to 200 millimeter, the new one of that, that has VR as well. So it's nothing new. But this one has got two different VR modes. In the normal mode, it is just kind of, it, it, it is neutralizing vibration. It detects it and it neutralizes it. And I don't know how and I don't really care how, so long as it does it and it does it well. In the active mode here, this is supposed to be used when shooting from a moving vehicle. Don't really know why, but it must be a super duper vibration reduction mode. 
apparently this VR also knows if you're panning, if you're chasing a greyhound around a track or, or a car going past or a cyclist or something, apparently this somehow knows and it doesn't try and cut out sideways movement. Don't know how it does it. But I have to say the VR works very, very well. I've also got much, much faster autofocus with this sort of a lens. It will focus incredibly quickly and I can tell the autofocus where I'm focusing. On full autofocus, it will focus across the entire range of the lens. Whereas when I have it on infinity to 2.5 meters, it's only gonna photograph from two and a half meters away to infinity. That means that if I'm shooting in that range, the focus hasn't got so far to hunt and it will focus in an instant. This poor old lens, although the quality is good, it's a bit of an old clunker. It focuses very, very slowly. That's brilliant, our food's arrived. Thank you very much indeed. There's no point being in a cafe if you're not gonna have something to eat at the same time. Yeah. There you go, there's yours. <laughs> Thank you, cheers. Put that to one side for a minute. Bad timing. Now then, I've forgotten where I got to. So that's really about all there is physically between the two. This one's bigger and it's heavier. It has faster autofocus. We've got manual focus on and manual focus off, which is you'd expect to have. We've got a big scallopy super duper lens hood to protect from lens flare. What we need to do now is to go and take a couple of pictures and compare the difference, because that's what we're really interested in. How will my pictures look if I spend an extra £1,200 on a lens?